Kesho Oahu Ohana. Welcome everyone. This is a new Ohana group that's meeting in Wahiwa. So if you are interested in joining this group, uh, I want you to be introduced to our leaders, uh, Lawrence and Nadine Antolin. Can you say hi? Yay! <laughs> Let's pray and uh, get ready for worship. Dear Jesus, we welcome your presence uh, today and we look forward to worshiping you with all our hearts. Lord, be the center of our worship right now. We, we welcome your presence and uh, Lord, may we engage wholeheartedly in worshiping you as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And here, here we go. go.
Lord, truly our only response, our only worship is to just offer our lives up to you in response to everything that you've done for us, in response to everything that you've given us. Lord, what can we possibly do to ever repay you? So we offer up our very lives. We surrender our futures to you, our hopes to you, our desires to you. We ask that you would be Lord of our lives and we thank you for everything that you've given us. And as we prepare to begin a new series, Lord God, we ask that you would use our circumstances, you would use every situation, this very season that we find ourselves in, to shape us, to perfect us, to mature us, to mold us, to build us up into that perfect person you created us to be, just like Jesus. And so, Lord, we give you permission. We surrender ourselves to you. We ask that you would have your way. Give us the strength to weather these trials and these challenges and to emerge from them stronger than ever before. And so we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Aloha, this is Jaylee Palumpo again for Harvest Family Life Ministries, a ministry for foster children and vulnerable children in Hawaii. Thank you to those of you who have generously donated school supplies this week. And for those of you who have not yet donated, it is not too late for you to join in. We still have one more week to receive all of our donations for Harvest Family Life. Items needed are backpacks specifically for middle school and high school students, three ring binders, composition notebooks, filler paper, ballpoint pens, highlighter pens, black Sharpie pens, color pencils, watercolors, markers, and crayons. With more families in need than ever due to the economic hardships of this year, we are hoping to provide school supplies for these children in foster care and vulnerable children. All supplies must be received by this Thursday, July 19th. If you want to help, please text 808 782-5756 to receive more information on when and where to drop off. Thank you for supporting Hawaii's Keiki. Aloha and welcome to New Hope Central Oahu Online. My name is Pastor Rich and it's my privilege to welcome you today. And you've picked a perfect day to come because today we are beginning a brand new series called Breaking Point Faith Under Pressure. Perfect for the times that we find ourselves in. Now, if you're here for the very first time, we invite you to fill out an online connection card. It's a tool that we use to get to know you and your family a little bit better, opportunity for you to find out more information about the church and different ministries here at the church, as well as we can all use it for prayer requests and praise reports. As you're filling that out, I do want to tell you about a new food distribution coming up on July 17th in Wahiwa. It's going to be at DOTS this time, and it's going to be from 10 to 12.30 a.m. Now, this is an opportunity for us to show love and compassion to those families who are having a difficult time through this season. And so if you have something you'd like to give in the way of non-perishable goods, or if you want to donate your time to be able to, to be a blessing for the community and to pray for people, hand out food, be a sign waiver, then please indicate that on your connection card. That's probably going to be the best way for us to get your information in the hands of people who can get you connected to that. Well, this is the portion of our service where we continue in worship through giving. Now, if you are here for the very first time, we want you to just relax and consider this service as our gift to you. But if you consider New Hope Central Oahu as your home church, then we would just ask that you would give as the Lord leads you to. And you can do that in one of three ways. You can use the giving buttons right here on this website. You can go to nhcohawaii.org and click the Give with Push Bay button in the upper right hand corner, or you can text NHCO to 77977 and follow the prompts. All right, let's pray for the offering. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day that you've given us, Lord, this time to gather together to worship you, and Lord, for the, the activity of your Son in our heart. Father, Lord, we just thank you that you have given us so much, Lord. Everything we have is, that's good and, and worthy has come from you. And Father, Lord, as we return a portion of that to you to further your work, Lord, we just ask that you would give us hearts that are grateful and that are excited about what you're doing. Father, give us hearts of praise. And Lord, use these gifts to multiply your kingdom and to share your son with other people in this community who have don't, haven't had the opportunity to get to know him yet. So Father, Lord, we just take, ask you to take these gifts and use them to build your kingdom. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, with that, let's go ahead and start our first message in our series titled Breaking Point. Breaking Point. 
Well, hello everyone, and welcome to our being planted in the house of the Lord allows us to flourish in the courts of our God. I'm Pastor Glenn, and thank you for joining us today as we seek wisdom from the book of James. Now, he witnessed firsthand almost everything that went on in his brother's life. And yes, James is the brother of Jesus Christ. So imagine how it affected him. Imagine how he saw Jesus growing up as a carpenter's apprentice. Imagine how he saw Jesus entering into ministry. Imagine how he saw Jesus suffering, how he saw Jesus die, and how he saw Jesus alive again. Now imagine how the disciples were criticized for following Jesus. Now thankfully, we don't have a Roman Empire to you know, torture Christians in arenas anymore, but we do live in a world that poses different kinds of challenges. Now last week, I shared how a breaking point is the moment of greatest strain at which someone or something gives way. Now let's face it, ever since this pandemic began, life changed. So we're all waiting to see if life will go back to normal. But it's in the waiting that presents the kind of stress that determines what our new normal might look like. Now as humans, we're pretty resilient. We'll adapt and we'll overcome, yet in the meantime, it affects us differently as we cope with the kinds of unexpected changes that alters our routines. And various changes causes varying degrees of emotional trauma. Now, realistically, this defines life. And after all, Jesus promised that we will have many trials and sorrows, but we know Jesus overcame the world. We are to take heart and find peace in him so we can thank jesus for the heads up now our human nature tends to focus on the trials section of the passage but our spirit focuses on taking heart the hope from overcoming the world and finding the peace so keep in mind jesus is leaving it up to you and i to choose so let's continue to reinforce the importance of taking precaution in our social interactions. Now, we can all agree that one's health should not be taken lightly. And aside from having to wear our masks in public, there are several things that we as responsible citizens need to comply with. Now, on a global scale, there's protesting on varying socio-political issues. Be aware of that. There's choices that we are privileged to make regarding the elections, and July 15th is around the corner, so have you done your taxes yet? Now, for the average family like us, it's the adjustments having to be made at home that gets most of our attention. Because if left unattended, these necessary adjustments are the very ones that may compound over time and cause immediate strain. Now, some of us have shifted in the way we do our jobs, and we'll do whatever it takes to survive financially within reason, of course. Some may not have a job at all. Some have yet to file unemployment, while others look for unemployment. Now, summer school for students has changed, while some have to figure out new childcare arrangements. Now, what about sports activities, dance recitals? Kids are getting restless at home as well. The education system is unsettled and parents are debating whether or not they should homeschool. Even church is pretty weird. Where we used to encourage a hug and a handshake, we now hope for high bandwidth over internet connections. But we'll adapt and we'll overcome. We'll just have to think long term and remain patient. Now in chapter 1, James encourages us by saying, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. In other words, count it all joy. And I'm thinking to myself, really, James, how am I going to find the joy in this one? Okay, Holy Spirit, you got to help me out here. Now, you know, this past Tuesday was another hot day, and Emmett and I, we have this routine of walking down to our favorite rec center to jump in the pool. Now, Teresa was going to join us, you know, sporting her new bathing suit, so we were pretty excited. We were going to have a lot of fun, and we finally get there, and we were denied entrance due to max capacity because of social distancing. Now, I admit... I was kind of grouchy, I was feeling a little entitled because they were messing with my fun, they were messing with my routine, right? I needed relief from the heat, 
So I admit I was feeling a little entitled. You know, they should have given me VIP status because we go there almost every day. They know who we are. But the attendant recommended that we drive down to another swimming pool, right? So we ended up having a real nice conversation with another family experiencing the same exact thing. So in short, Emmett and I were able to cool off, which was nice. And of course, we ended up having a great time. Now that was just a simple, simple example of breaking our routine and how it interrupted our personal lives. Now, one isn't bad, but what if you experience more than one interruption? It can get pretty annoying and it can push us to our breaking point. So James mentors us, mentors you and I, that these situations, we can find, we can look at these situations enthusiastically and respond to them with a heavenly point of view. Now I know that's not always easy, but over time we can do it. So give ourselves grace, think long term and remind ourselves that number one, there is joy to be found in all things. Now difficulties of course comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes and although we may not readily experience the joy that James refers to, I believe God reveals it in time. Now verse 3 encourages us, for you know that when your faith is tested it stirs up power within you to endure all things. So I'm sure that we can agree that we are all creatures of habit and sometimes when our habits change we freak out. So go ahead and fold your arms like this. Now why is it that we as humans are inclined to fold our arms the same way every time? Now go ahead and fold your arms the other way. Now you see, I probably lost some of you already. So it's not that it's physiologically impossible that our shoulders are going to pop out or our elbows are going to break. It's just a different way of doing it. And maybe you've heard that faith is a lot like a muscle. So like a muscle, I prefer to think of faith as trained or untrained. So ask yourself, is my faith flabby or is it firm? Flabby or firm. Now scripture says that when faith is tested or passes the test, it stirs up or generates power to endure all things. That means it generates energy and that energy in turn activates and accelerates you and I to the blessings that we are promised. Now James 1.12 teaches us that if our faith remains strong, even while surrounded by life's difficulties, we will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. Now a couple of days ago, I was talking with my son Micah and uh, he was working out in the gym in the backyard. Now we were celebrating the fact that he hit a new back squat personal record. So I told him I was proud of him because he's been back squatting more than his body weight and increasing the weight each time. Now I'm reminded of the saying that goes, don't ask for a lighter load, but ask for a stronger back. Now think of having the kind of strain or the kind of weight that you would think you wouldn't be able to handle, but you do. Now faith like that gets stirred up and activated based on the gravity of the situation. Now you and I wouldn't be aware of the kind of faith generating power that we are capable of producing if we were not first placed under that kind of weight or that kind of strain. Now being able to handle that strain would be an opportunity to celebrate allowing us to experience personal victories. Much like physical strain, there's emotional strain and spiritual strain. And similar to physical strain, we are able to progress by enduring different things. Now I was reflecting on the word responsibility. Notice there's no such word as reactability. There's no such thing as the ability to react because reacting seems to be our default as imperfect human beings. There is, however, the ability to respond. God designed us to be responsible people, so in a certain situation, we know there's a proper way to acknowledge it, to address it, and finally to respond to it. Responding is making the best choice in all we do with the Holy Spirit's help. So God increases our responsibilities by trusting us with bigger things because He first trusts us with little things. 
Jesus taught that he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. So if we feel the strain of a decrease in income, a change in employment, a change in scheduling, know that as we respond properly, our faith increases like a firm muscle in training. So the second point is to know that our faith is either trained or untrained. Now we get to choose making the necessary changes that leads to blessings. So we train our faith by doing the simple things right. Now there's four G's I live by to strengthen my faith. The first G is goal. Make it a goal to read God's word regularly. Now notice I didn't say every day, so give ourselves grace if we don't open the Bible seven days a week. It happens. So remember, there's online services, audios, worship music, and even radio to help with our daily intake. So number two, give up. Now what are the things that might be diminishing our faith? It may be an activity we're involved in, so if so, give it up. God will highlight them for us and be sure to engage in activities that reinforce our faith. Number three, get around. So get around other believers. I've heard it said that you become the person you are by the things you read and the people you surround yourself with. Now for me, it's the Bible and hanging out with Jesus. And of course, hanging out with others that hang out with Jesus. Now I believe this is the most wonderful association anyone can have. And number four, growth opportunities. Identifying values and live them out. So if it's calling out to us, causing us to feel strain in a good way, it's an indication that God wants to grow our faith in order to go beyond who we are, in order to bring out the best version of ourselves. Now several times people ask, how do I increase capacity? Another way of saying it is, how do I not feel stressed when stressful times come? I believe verse 4 answers that for us. It says, as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. So I believe this ought to be the source of our motivation. Now as faith strengthens our endurance, our endurance increases. As our endurance increases, we become more perfect. Now I admit that I want to be perfect in every possible way. The key is to understand humility, submission, and obedience to the one who provides perfection. And of course, we know who the answer is. The answer is always Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12.9 explains that God's grace is always more than enough for us and that His power finds its full expression or perfection in our weakness. So let's review. Number one, there is joy to be found in all things, and although we may not experience joy right away, God reveals it in time. Number two, our faith is either trained or untrained. So go from flabby faith to firm faith. And then number three, strong faith and increased endurance releases perfection. Let that motivate you, brothers and sisters, and release perfection in our lives for God's glory. Now as we jump to verse 22, it says, Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it, for that is the essence of self-deception. So always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. Now this passage points out that a life of not responding properly to God's word is basically lying to yourself. In other words, you may not be aware, you may not understand that we can live a faith-filled life. So the Passion Translation also says to let God's Word become like poetry, which allows our lives to become a part of God's narrative. Great poetry always conveys profound messages. It's timeless, it impacts, it provokes thought, it evokes emotion, it resonates, which in turn gives our lives power and purpose to define our identities as faith-filled followers of Christ. So in conclusion, James reminds us of the one sure place we go to for encouragement. Needing encouragement implies we might be discouraged about something 
and we may feel the strain of wondering what the next six months is going to look like. We may feel the strain of wondering about the fate of our employment, the fate of our education system, and the fate of our business endeavors. It's in this discouragement we find areas of imperfection. Now as Christ followers, we ought to feel confident, bold, assured, and that may not always be the case, but together, brothers and sisters, we can work towards that. So make sure you join us for the upcoming weeks. Now next week, we'll learn how to assess trials according to the will of God as we seek to understand what purposes they serve, and we'll do this by understanding the importance of living from the inside out. Week 3 shows us that salvation is both a surrender and a victory. So we do this by raising our individual white flag of humility, and Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner, will be raised to be glorified in and through our lives. Now, have you ever noticed that the word word, W-O-R-D, is in the word sword? Now, the Bible teaches us that God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. So in week four, we'll learn to live louder than words by letting our actions speak. And we'll train to do this by wielding God's mighty weapons, His word, and our tongue. Now week five finds us standing on convictions and wrestling over differences. We look forward to a stimulating and thought-provoking panel discussion of faith and truth that reinforces our need to remain humble in order to remain unified. Pastor Teresa then closes out the series in week six entitled The Reckoning. Now she has always been a bottom line gal and in this message she teaches us the power and purpose of prayer and we'll learn how to go beyond memorization but communicating with God Almighty every day and in every way. Now today, if you're excited about growing more and more perfect God's way, the first thing we need to do is to allow Jesus to be Lord over your life. Now he can remove any stress and any strain that you may be feeling. So hold on to Jesus and I promise you, he will never let you go. You can do this by saying a simple prayer and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Now others of you may have followed Jesus for some time but experiencing different breaking points throughout your life cause you to drift in a different direction. Now I want to encourage you to shift back to reunite with Jesus once again. I'm so excited for you. So let's get to it. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. I know I'm not perfect, but Jesus makes me perfect. I ask today that you live in my heart and be Lord of my life and I turn from my life without you into a life with you. In Jesus name I pray, Amen. Now if you said that prayer brothers and sisters, you are a new creation in Christ, congratulations. Would you go ahead and share that with us by making sure you hit that yes button on your screen and if you would please fill out a connection card so that we can celebrate this wonderful moment with you. Thank you so very much and be sure to join us next week. Until then everybody, may the presence of grace and truth continue to fill your heart and homes. God bless everybody. We'll see you next time. Wasn't that a great message from Pastor Glenn? And if any one of you uh, would like prayer, stick around because our prayer team is uh, standing by to take any of your prayer requests. And we want to welcome you back also for next week as we continue our series, Breaking Point. And from our Ohana to yours, have a spirit-filled week. Aloha. What does Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, the Hulk, and each of us have in common? That's right, we're all human, human with desires. Some of those desires could lead us into great victories while others could lead us, well, into dark and dismal defeat. It can be quite confusing trying to discern which is which. Throw in the mix the fear of anyone seeing or knowing what those inner desires are, and you've got, well, a pretty big mess. But what if you could examine those desires and actually discern which ones are going to lead to victory and which ones would lead otherwise? 
Well, good news, you can. In this segment of our Breaking Point series, we will take these desires inside out and through God's Word discover what it means to walk in victory. New Hope Spark, the online ministries of New Hope Central Oahu. Intro take one. Wait, 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 okay. What it, should I go? What would be best for you? Because everyone's two count might be different, right? <laughs> right after the nod, we should just. Huh? Okay, right. Now. Yeah, but because see, okay. Because you gotta, if I say intro take one, the guy not going to cut that out. So you gotta have some pause. Oh. She might say, 
and, and you might I'm get too naughty one. too. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Should take one. Just, just give, just, <laughs> you watch me go say, like, I'll, I'll do that, and you go, welcome, okay? okay. All that, okay. 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 <laughs> Intro take two. Well, you saw me, bro. Oh, we're doing, we're doing two count. One. After the nine. Okay, one, two. Okay. Okay, so we are taking a two count. That's what you said, Mike. Two count. Okay. Two count, then start. I would say ding. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay, intro take three. That was two counts. Okay, intro take four. Welcome, New Hope Central Oahu Ohana. Intro take six. Okay. okay. Intro, what is this? Seven. Take seven. Uh, okay, ready? Intro, take seven. Welcome, 